Welcome to everyone. Um, I'm trying to admit everyone into the meeting. There's a few people coming in. Greetings, Dr. Swami Nathan. And uh, good, good evening, Dr. Swami Nathan. Yes, <laughs> you. Good morning. Morning. I, I don't know why I appear in two windows. <laughs> I had no intention to have more than I needed. I don't know. Maybe I will. Well, the one with the, we like the one with the background of the Antarctic. That's Johnny now. Or the Arctic, it is. Sorry. Uh, Ramesh, greetings to you as well. Hello. I believe and then come back to uh, you. You can hear me clearly. Joining us from the Ukraine. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. So my Welcome. name is Ramesh Prasanna. Good evening. Yeah. Greetings. Okay, so look, let's start by doing our introductions. It's a thing that we want to do here. Um, and uh, then we're going to get on to our speakers. Um, we have some interesting talks lined up. So can I just, I'll introduce myself. Hello, it's, you know me, Dr. Thomas Daffern. I coordinate these monthly meetings for the World Intellectual Forum. I'm a philosopher and historian. I live in France and um, I have a PhD in the history and philosophy and, uh, you know, of, of peacemaking from 1945 to 2001. So I'm interested in the psychological history of the Cold War, which is one of the topics today, uh, given Ukraine and Russia are having some problems. Um, okay, so that's enough from me. Let's go around. Sean, um, do introduce yourself and then we'll quickly scoot around. Yeah. Yes. Very quickly. Hello, everyone. Delighted to be back uh, on the seminars again. My name is Sean English, and I've worked with Thomas over quite a number of years. And again, my areas in peace studies, and particularly the philosophies of peace and peace theories, and trying to see how we can bring them into the real world of political realities. You know, the, the ideas that previous philosophers have set up and theologians and what we're missing, the wisdom that's there that we can bring into the real political world with say of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine or whatever conflict it is. So okay. Yeah. Okay, welcome Sean. Thank you. And today's the anniversary of Bloody Sunday, a, a massacre in Ireland. Yeah, we'll yeah. talk about that. It's on the agenda for later. Um, okay. Ian, Ian joining us from Australia. Do introduce yourself. I, I have been associated with this organisation for some time now at the invitation of Dr. Swaminathan and uh, his colleague uh, uh, Swaman, uh, uh, Swami Agnaverdi. And uh, my special area of interest is interfaith relations. I've worked in that field for now for quite a few years, since the Yom Kippur War in 1973, in fact. That's where it all started. Uh, I've served on many committees. I've chaired the Victorian Council of Churches Interfaith Commission for some years. I've only just stood down from that. Um, uh, I've been closely associated with the World Council of Churches and some of its programs. And um, uh, my particular interest is in the establishment of a a global center for the uh, reassessment of the divisive theologies around which the world faith uh, divide and which cause so much trouble. And I'm yeah. having conversations with other organizations about that area at this stage. Well, that's a mammoth job. Um, we're all a bit like Don Quixote up against the windmill, let's be honest. <laughs> thank you, Ian, for your great work. Uh, Dr. Swami Nathan, it's your turn next. Yeah, uh, I am the global chair for the World Intellectual Forum. I was a former vice chancellor of a technical university in Hyderabad and also a member planning commission, Government of India. I was teaching structural engineering in uh, Andhra Pradesh, uh, in the technical, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru Technological University, Hyderabad. So I'm here to join the meeting and uh, listen to the uh, galaxy speakers who have joined here. Thank you. Yeah, welcome, Dr. Swaminathan. Good to see you. And Ramesh, you're on next. You're also in Hyderabad, I believe. 
do unmute yourself and introduce yourself. From the Delphic Council, Ramesh is, uh, yeah, Secretary General. Good evening. I think I'm a neighbor of Dr. Swaminathan from the same city. And uh, it's just that we need to connect and meet. And uh, uh, good evening to all of you. I, I'm, I'm Ramesh Prasanna. You know, I'm a cultural entrepreneur. When I say cultural entrepreneur, I am in enterprises or businesses or activities which center around cultural spaces like museums and uh, the like. I have also been involved with uh, visual media as in television production and film productions, but uh, of, a, of a kind which is, you know, more documentary in nature. And I have also been involved with, uh, you know, intellectual properties and cultural properties per se. Currently, I, I am uh, the Secretary General of the International Delphi Council, the world's, uh, you know, only known, uh, what you call it, art and culture, common floor, which uh, revived the Delphic Games about uh, 27 years ago, uh, which is a 2000 Delphi and we are also the, you know, known as the twin sister of the Olympic Games because we started with the same parentage. And Olympic Games is for physical sports, whereas we are for art and culture. We represent uh, all the art forms in the world and all the cultural identities in the world in a common floor. And uh, we organize something called the Delphic Games once in four years, just the way Olympic Games are um, Ramesh, in, sorry, can I just interrupt? Years old, we have seven um, games that Ramesh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but your sound quality is very bad. It's not going to record properly, and people won't hear properly what the Delphi Games are about. So, can can I ask you to come on later with a with a clearer sound connection, or or if that's possible? <laughs> um, uh, unfortunately, we just I think people got the main gist that Ramesh is Secretary General of the Delphi Council, which organises the International Delphi Games. And I'm the educational coordinator. So I hope we can discuss this later when you've reached your destination. I, I see you're driving, Ramesh. Thank you. Um, okay, Karen. Okay, fine. Well, do, do stay and please join the meeting. But um, let's move on to Karen now for her introduction from uh, MAPS. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I. First of all, I'm, I'm still a little bit out of the weather, so I hope I can, I sound all right. Um, and it's a good, good morning for, for us here in North America. I'm in Canada, and I guess good afternoon or evening for some of you. Um, so my name is Karen. I'm very happy to be here and, and uh, in a crowd that I don't usually find myself in. During the day, I'm a neurologist, and that's what I still do. But I also volunteer for this organization, Parvati Foundation, and we're going to be talking, myself and Rena, about our initiative called MAPS today. And so I'd be happy to tell you more about it. Um, but I'm happy to also be here with, with a crowd that is very learned and uh, has, you know, a lot to, I have a lot to learn from. Thank you. Thank you. You're joining us from Canada, right? Are you in Montreal? Yeah. Okay, welcome. I'm Canadian by birth, so nice to see you. Uh, Larissa, you're in Kiev. Do introduce yourself. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so, and thank you, Thomas, for inviting me especially to this meeting. So, my name is Larissa. I'm a philosopher. I have a PhD in philosophy, and uh, uh, most of uh, my years I was focused on uh, French philosopher Emmanuel Levinas, who contributes a lot to uh, pieces and ethical values, etc. Uh, so I'm, um, I'm working in the Institute of Philosophy in National Academy of Science uh, of Ukraine. Uh, so, um, but right now when uh, it's time when academic philosopher will become a, also a public speaker. So uh, I'm here as a, first of all, as a Ukrainian from Kiev. And uh, if you wish to, to know our moods, our expectations, everything. So I would be love to, to share with you. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you very much, Larissa. We met in India in the Delft, um, in uh, the Conference on Nonviolence. And Larissa is uh, you know, gonna talk to us later about how things look from a Ukrainian intellectual perspective, vis-a-vis -vis peace with Russia and so on. So thank you for joining us. Um, Rina, it's, it's uh, your chance to join us, please. Do introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be with you. This is a special space 
Thank you, Thomas, for the invitation. Um, Thomas and I met in the uh, International Peace <coughs> Congress, the recent one. Um, and um, actually, I feel very comfortable to be here. I, I always love to learn about philosophy. So my main, my main topic is the immunology and the microbiology. I'm a consultant scientist. Um, however, here I am uh, representing the Power of the Foundation, and I'm really thrilled to share with you about the dark condition of the Arctic Ocean and maps as the critical solution. Right. Thank you very much, Rina. Uh, Barty, you're joining us from India. Do introduce yourself. Nice to see you. Hope you're staying well. And Barty's our youth yeah. coordinator for the World Intellectual Forum. Thank you so much, Thomas. Uh, good evening, everybody. Yes. Nice to see you all here. And we are at the same platform for the same mission. Here, Bharti Jain from India, a wellness consultant and IT specialist. I was with the Ministry of Health Government of India, and uh, I'm an author, I'm a researcher, and uh, I'm a holistic health healer, which is working on youth and women empowerment. I'm running an NGO which is working for youth and women empowerment a lot. And I'm connected with the, the World Intellectual Forum to handle the youth wing. And we are working towards you know, the betterment and empowerment of youth throughout the world. So here it is, my innovation is Namoka Gym. That is my research program, which is psychology and spirituality. So how we can heal ourselves. Uh, and currently I'm working on research of stem cells and how we can heal ourselves with the music therapy. And also I'm here in Delhi uh, with the research institute uh, on human you know, energy resource center for right. the researchers. Okay, so thank I you. I hope uh, we can do much better together. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Barty. Welcome. Um, okay, Kanu, are you there in Dubai? We can't see a picture, but do introduce yourself. Hello, Professor Thomas. Ah. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, we yeah. can see you as well. Yes. Yeah. So thank you very much, Professor Thomas, for inviting me once again. And it's like after quite a long time, we are meeting again. And I'm connected with World Intellectual Forum for like last one year. And uh, um, I'm Dr. Kanu Megha, and I'm PhD in medical biochemistry. And most of my research work is focused on uh, neurological effects of microwave radiation. So I, during my PhD, I worked on the radiation um, from the mobile towers, from mobile radiation, uh, Wi-Fi radiation, all these uh, microwave radiation in the microwave range and their effect on brain. After that, uh, and during my postdoctorate, uh, post I worked on Alzheimer's disease. So my main, main research area of interest in neuroscience and uh, I worked on diabetic neuropathy also. And currently I'm working as an assistant professor in Manipal uh, University, Dubai campus and I'm teaching here uh, various life sciences uh, subjects like biochemistry, molecular biology, immunology also and uh, other related subjects and uh, that's about my introduction and I'm uh, interested in talking about neuroscience and how it can be uh, correlated with consciousness, anger, hatred uh, and conflict situations and even the peace situations. So Yes, yes, Kanu, thank you very much. Kanu spoke um, at the World and Social Forum meetings a couple of times earlier last year and gave some brilliant presentations on the, um, uh, you know, the neurology of peace. So let's hope that that work continues. Um, Dr. Mishra, are you able to introduce yourself briefly? Joining us from India again, we have the World Intellectual Forum headquarters is in India. So we have, um, you know, we're better known in India than other parts of the world, perhaps. Um, Okay, Dr. Mishra, if you want to introduce yourself later, feel free. Um, and Shristi Dubé, I believe, is working with Ramesh. Yeah, um, so that's excellent. Do you want to introduce yourself, Shristi? Okay, well, anyway, welcome. Now, look, I think what we'll do, um, because our global chairman is, is here, very, um, you know, excellent. He's just been writing three books. 
I mean, intellectuals like to write books. So all of us, I'm sure, are busy writing. I know Larissa is. I am. Ian is. I'm good all. Um, let's hear from Dr. Swami Nathan first as our global chairman about his latest books, his state, state of the world address. Are you feeling positive? Um, and then we're going to, after we've heard from him, we're going to go to our Arctic team that are trying to save the Arctic from war, um, joining us from the new world. And then I want to move on to discuss the Ukraine situation with Larissa. But Dr. Swami Nathan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. Uh, uh, I would like to briefly touch upon the uh, contemporary world situation with regard to peace and security. That is my area of interest. I am um, worried about three, three things. Number one is uh, the kind of uh, uh, bad situation of the world, the catalytic uh, and also the critical situation with regard to world peace and security. Today you have seen uh, in newspapers regarding uh, Russia and the Ukraine conflict, uh, which made which may end up in uh, world war, may end up, I may mean, not, that is a different thing, that is a serious thing. And also we got already done uh, on, on hand, uh, Syrian civil war, Yemen situation, uh, Azerbaijan and Armenia conflict, uh, the Korean Peninsula, North Korea, and uh, now for Russia and uh, of course Russia and uh, Ukrainian situation may drag in all uh, the European countries as well in case it gets a, a serious turn. So I'm also, um, that uh, perhaps uh, may lead to the perspectives, uh, perspective third world war situation, which I've been uh, talking about. Uh, that's the first worry. And the second worry is uh, the failure of the global uh, governing systems uh, to meet the situation, to rectify the situation, to do anything to stop the local uh, regional conflicts or even the wars. So I mean the United Nations organization, which was set up after the Second World War, 19, 1945. It, it has done nothing to stop all these things. Therefore, it's a failure. This is a second worry. And third, of course, is uh, my own suggestion of uh, having an alternative system of uh, world governance uh, in place of United Nations. That is uh, a world government, uh, a democratic uh, federal system of government, which have got some powers uh, to prevail upon the local countries, uh, countries to stop uh, local conflicts and also the, their contribution towards uh, pro prospect to a third world war. So these are the three things that was, have been worrying me. Keeping this in view, I have written uh, about seven books already, and then one book is in, in printing, another book is in editing, one book is in translation. So the very underlying thread of all these uh, books uh, is uh, the how to stop the uh, world war again, having seen the Holocaust of the uh, Second World War. Uh, uh, and using the atomic bombs on Japan. So you don't want to see such things uh, to recur again. And uh, having uh, at the moment with all our modernization and development and also development in thinking process as well, we should see that uh, nothing could uh, will happen to see such things, uh, uh, such a Holocaust take place again. So I suggested an alternative um, global governing system as the new world government and uh, the structure and also the constitution. So that book has been published already in the new world government structure and constitution by which uh, Dr. Thomas has written a foreword, uh, excellent foreword there for that. Then I have got uh, 
uh, and one more book, Can We Save the Planet uh, uh, from the Holocaust of the, the, uh, the weapons of mass destruction? So that is another book where, again, I have reiterated uh, the whole global problems and I have uh, recounted uh, various, uh, various um, suggestions, various uh, processes uh, that have been suggested uh, for global governance. And also I have included my own uh, governing, stru governing government structure. So uh, again, the lastly, you think of uh, Tom, uh, Professor Thomas uh, has written a foreword for my book, the the tale of three nations uh, in the Indian subcontinent. Uh, three nations means India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. In the originally, well, they are uh, the same uh, soil, working together, living together, without having same culture, tradition, etc. But uh, uh, unfortunately, they are divided. You know, British have divided the India and Pakistan, and later. The Bangladesh uh, dismembered from Pakistan, and now that they stand as three independent nations uh, fighting each other, not having any coordination at all. You know, this situation in the subcontinent is not uh, leading to any peaceful uh, situation. Therefore, I have got this wild idea. I say wild idea because they are coming together is almost impossible again my idea is to bring them together make them together and call uh, them as uh, the uh, indian union of uh, this is what i said in my book union of indian subcontinent nations uh, on the lines of european union take it as a model and then uh, drop uh, a proposal to have a the combine these uh, unification of the three countries under union of indian subcontinent nations and then i also suggested that uh, uh, under this uh, union uh, we have we can have a defense pact uh, called south east asia defense treaty seat Earlier, I we called it a shadow, but which uh, I think Dr. Thomas objected to his saying that is not a good word. <laughs> so I have uh, uh, rewritten it as uh, uh, Southeast Asia Defense Treaty on the lines of NATO. So these are the two main things I suggested. And then uh, in the end, I suggested that this uh, union should support the world government, world federal democratic government to minimize the influence of the superpowers. So coming together of these three nations, uh, um, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, will not only help maintaining a regional, but also world peace and security. So this was one of the books I have written. Uh, so all these books, uh, as I said, the underlying thread is uh, to see how best we can bring about world peace and security. Right. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Swami Nathan. And your your efforts are heroic. If we can save the world through publishing books, then we're mm -hmm. going to be in the forefront. Um, yeah. And any questions for Dr. Swami Nathan, put in the chat, please, whilst he's online. We won't uh, go into questions for everyone, every speaker, but what, because I want to get as many speakers as possible. But but um, I'm sure people have questions. I think personally that the idea of a European Union type of union for the Indian nations is a brilliant idea. And I noted that um, the leader of India, Modi, was just meeting some Central Asian leaders in a, in a summit uh, just a couple of days ago. So um, yeah, I think you should send your book to Modi and he might be interested. And I also know that the leader of Bangladesh who joined the Paris Peace Forum in November, she is very much committed to peace. She's a Muslim scientist, academic, and philosopher of a high order. And also the president of Pakistan, um, Imran Khan, is a very clever intellectual. We should get these three people on board for your project. Let's do it. And yeah. um, 
you know, I don't see why not. I think also later we'll hear from Ramesh, or maybe he could say now. Ramesh, could you just say you have for the Delphic Games meet, uh, members in Pakistan and Bangladesh, don't you? Could you tell us about that? Yeah, it's an excellent idea. In fact, uh, India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, we have all the three countries, we have Delphic Council. And uh, in fact, we are working on a model of peace through arts and cultures because we call that track five diplomacy in diplomatic language. But I guess, uh, you know, we are not taxing with the government as such. But what we do is that through the Delphi Games, the Delphi Arts and various initiatives, we do intend to organize activities which are common to all the three countries because culturally speaking, India, Pakistan and Bangladesh, all the three have a common, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> the lineage obviously. And more than that, I think even when it comes to a language, subcultures, in fact, Bangladesh is a very good example of how they've not changed many of the street names, many of the festivals, the way they celebrate, even in spite of the fact that, you know, we are not together for the last maybe about um, 75 plus years. And yet there is, there is a commonality that we have. Similarly, Pakistan, while, you know, language might have, uh, you know, uh, become something else right now, and the subcultures and the narratives must have changed. But people's mindset, because I personally worked with Pakistan, uh, you know, Pakistanis, uh, as an Indian, uh, when I made television. And I realized that, you know, the we have a lot of commonality and emotionally we connect very deeply. So I think Dr. Swaminathan's um, proposition that there should be a union is a wonderful proposition. In fact, I think uh, this is something that I have been uh, you know, wondering for a long time that why cannot we have something in common? Maybe we can, we can never get together. We know that um, there are there are very deep divides. And now that there are a lot of vested interests, it will never happen. But however, a union kind of a thing, especially currency, for example, or, uh, you know, borders are a little more open. Uh, you know, people can possibly trade freely, you know, for example. And when you talk about defense, I mean, all the three countries, for whatever reason, spend a lot of money on defense. And I think if you combine things together, then first of all, we don't fight to start with. And then what then happens is that you become stronger in the region and therefore you're also a deterrent for, you know, other people. And then this the South Asian continent, South Asian, uh, we call it in Urdu, it's called Barashagir is what they call it in the South Asian, uh, you know, or the peninsular region. Now in this <coughs> peninsular region, I think uh, these are the three countries that matter the most uh, in, in many ways, including the fact that Pakistan is a gateway towards the West and Bangladesh is a gateway towards the East. And uh, which is why I think even the trade, the, in the ancient trade, Bangladesh played a very, very important role. So I think it's a wonderful idea, sir. And I think this is something that one should possibly diplomatically pursue, possibly lobby for it. And, uh, you know, even talk to the prime minister, like, uh, you know, um, Ms. Thomas just mentioned, it okay. works very well. Nothing wrong in talking to it. Thank you so much, Ramesh, for your comments. I mean, I must suggest you two should meet. You live in the same city. Go and talk about uh, this project and how the Delphic Games and the World Intellectual Forum can collaborate. Because the Delphic Games are trying to unite the world through art, through music, through dance, through culture. And we're, we're I mean, intellecting, as Abelard called it, is also an art form. Um, so we're on the same, the same team. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Swaminathan, and uh, for that contribution.